heart that's transitioning into evangelism stops to say, now let me think about where I am on this list. Because the enemy is going to do his best to make sure that I meet up with somebody that's going to poke at the weakness that I have. And, and because you all, as we encourage one another to live evangelism, not all of us are going to be called to the same places. Pastor Rob has shared with us his calling to a particular place. All of us aren't called to go there, but all of us are called to go somewhere. And for some of us, it's the circle of family members who are not saved or friends or on the job. Those are the people who know where you fit on the list. So we really do have to, I think, start with, and I think the Bible really encourages us. There's a place in the scripture, you got to see the context, but there's a place in the scripture that it talks about how judgment comes first to the house of God. So even as we go, even as we consider preparing for revival, there is an aspect of that before we come, that we need to be dealing with ourselves and letting God expose and show us where are we on this list and, 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 that, and it, that also can be our excuse not to go. We can't say, well, I got too many of these hang-ups, so evidently that, God, you, that ain't it either. God says, Let's get, get right, church, and we ain't going home yet but before we go, right? So, so it's important for us to consider where we are on this list and to remember as we go that because even, if we are, even though we're not in bondage to any of those things on the list, we once were. Because what we do is we get saved and changed and healed and delivered, and then we go back out and forget that we were changed, healed, and, and delivered. So we got to remember that the very people that we're going to, their sin issue might be different, but, they, but just like us, they're in sin. We were in sin, period. I don't care what, how we try to change it and make it look big or little, we were in sin, so we have to remember that. And, and I thought about this, the, these characteristics that Pastor Rob just went through that's in the Scripture, are probably the very things that Jesus saw, some of the very things he saw, when we read in Matthew 9, 36 through 38, and listen to this, I think we have it. It, it says, and you all know, because we've said this before, I love this passage. When he, talking about Jesus, saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, I love this, it's perfect. Then he said to his disciples, because when he looked at the crowd, he saw they were helpless and harassed. Then he says to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly. Uh-oh, I went too far. Pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. I think it's interesting. Into his harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. But listen, he didn't say, I looked on the people, they were helpless and harassed, them old dirty lion scoundrels. Now pray for the, them old dirty lion scoundrels to get right. He didn't even focus on that. He said, I saw them with compassion that they were helpless. I don't care what they were doing. All the things we listed, all the stuff we see in the world that we're talking about and complaining about, he said, I saw with compassion. And what I saw were people who were helpless and harassed like sheep without a shepherd. And then he turned back and said to the, his people, the disciples, us, now pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers into his harvest. The other thing about that that hit me today is he called all them people doing all that stuff his harvest. I thought to myself, that, and it's consistent with Jesus' ministry. He, he never went to the people who were helpless and harassed and started beating them down because they were helpless and harassed. He went loving them and healing them and saving and delivering. And when he was angry, when he was chastising, it was the religious people. It was the church. His example was so like, how do we miss, how do we miss that? He went to places and spaces to love people and, and listen to people and be with people. And then he came back and said, shame on us for not doing that. So I think that's so important. That the timing of that scripture is perfect. So we got to remember as we go, we were once a part of the list that Paul mentioned. We were once helpless and harassed by the enemy. We were once a part of the harvest that needed salvation. We were once in the crowd who desperately needed a savior. And we have to remember, keep that in the forefronts of our minds as we go.
Great. So as we move um, into talking more about intentional evangelism, um, we must make some application from what Paul is saying in these passages and then consider the reality of what we may see in people as we go. But we also must strive, um, strive to embrace the responsibility of handling people and situations in a way that represents Jesus and reflects his kingdom. And so we got to do that in a way. So we just want to just leave you with that. We'll come back next week and we'll discuss it a little bit more. But we want you guys to start getting in your minds uh, and, and allowing the Lord to prepare you when we go out into marketplace ministry, wherever the Lord sends you, whether it's on your job, whether it's in your free time, whether it's, uh, you know, in your family, whatever it is, you have to learn how to deal with uh, difficult characteristics of people. And so, and we got to learn how to do it the right way. And so we got to operate with some power. We can't neglect or deny the power and try to operate with just the forms of godliness because we're going to fail every single time. And so I think he's trying to help us to understand that. All right. Well, that's all we have. That's all we have for today. Um, yes. <laughs> I know it could, it can be challenging. It's always hard, but he said it's never easy. His life is not going to be easy, but he's given us some power, given us some power to make it through the challenging times. And so, so yeah, so let me give you some announcements and then we'll, we'll pray. Uh, we'll close out in prayer and then we're going to um, do some more praying. <laughs> All right. Um, Christian Ed Fellowship is this Sunday right after after worship. We're going to be over in the Jackson Family Life Center. So those that are uh, in your Christian Air classes, we want to just fellowship. We want to fellowship with you all. If you guys aren't in Christian Air, sign up today and you can – you can st- <laughs> Yeah. You can, but we still want y'all to sign up for Christian Ed and, and, and attend it. And, and uh, don't just sign up and not – you know, that's a form of godliness, but the <laughs> denying the power there. Uh, so sign up and, and receive some power in Christian Ed. But we want, we really want a fellowship. Uh, I want you all to come, all to come over and fellowship with us. And we, we're going to have some, I think they're going to try to put a few games out and all of that so we can just fellowship for a little bit. So we have that. Um, also, Senior Saints Luncheon is resuming on this coming Monday, the 11th. Uh, at um, 11 to 1 p.m., 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. over in the Jackson Family Life Center. So they're going to have food, games, fun, and prizes, and all of that. So, so come on out and join. Um, they're starting back up from uh, the summer, so they took a couple of months off. So, so they're p- beginning that again. Also, they're going. They have a um, senior wellness initiative that they're starting up. It's called Wise. And it deals with senior citizens and helping them in terms of uh, their health and and all of that information. And so that starts Tuesday, September the 12th, and it goes through, I believe, the third week of October. And it will be on Tuesdays here in Jackson, in the Jackson Family Life Center, starting at one o'clock, one to three, I believe. And so there's a flyer out on the bulletin boards with that information on there. So please. Um, join our senior citizens, and they said the ages are 50 and older. So, Chandra, you They get keep dropping the age. So, Chandra, they you, keep you dropping get to make it. <laughs> we, we almost there, too. But they keep but dropping we're not the age. 50. <laughs> they keep dropping. We're not 50. <laughs> they keep dropping the age. Yeah, so, next dropping. thing is going to be 45 and the seniors. But, so, <laughs> but if you're 50 and older, you're, you're more than welcome. Vanna, you got a couple more years. <laughs> uh, so... Praise the Lord. A lot of, we got a lot of years. All right. Well, let me close out with a word of prayer. Thank you guys for joining us. Those that will be looking at it, um, uh, the recording on social media, thank you so much. But we want to just close out with prayer. All right. Father, we bless you and thank you and give you glory for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for helping us, God, to understand that we have to not only have the forms of godliness, but we have to operate with the power of of the Holy Spirit, that dunamis power. So thank you, Father, for helping us to know 
that as we go out into the marketplace and ministry in the marketplace, God, that we're going to encounter some characteristics of people that aren't like you, that don't reflect you. But, Lord, we have to deal with them, God, uh, as you dealt with them. So, Lord, give us your heart. Uh, give us the words. Help us to see people through your eyes. God, help us to put our own selves aside and allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. So, Father, we thank you for what you're going to do. And so, Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. All right. Thank you all.